So, uh, and, and probably we should identify maybe what some of the malfunctions are for those that may not know. But but let's just first talk about like what what's prevention look like. I think uh, prevention primarily will start um, with the user itself. Um, now, this is me uh, from uh, the philosophy of how I've understood malfunctions is that first we want to make sure that our gear is operational. So we want to make sure it's well maintained, well lubricated and cleaned and functional, you know, so that we're going out. We don't want to be those bubbas in the back of the van, you know, in those CIA movies, you know, checking their guns, you know, right before they walk in, right? We want to make sure that that's all done ahead of time and that all of our gear is primo and ready to go um, so that we don't have any of those types of malfunctions. And then also we want to make sure that our movements for weapon manipulation are precise as we can be in the situation. So we want to make sure that we're getting a good uh, grip on the gun. We're getting a good clean draw, clearing our uh, uh, cover garments and those types of things to get them out of the way of the function of the weapon um, and trying to reduce as much uh, end user error as we can. And I think that's probably where we would start. The second um, common thing is, uh, as we've sort of touched on, is user induced. So poor grip, inconsistent grip, inconsistent draw, things of that nature. Your your gun cycles because you fire around and it has something to push against, meaning your hand on the grip, to allow that slide to move to the rear fully and fully extract a case and then pick up the next one and shove it back in. If your hand or wrist is experiencing too much movement and not enough resistance to that recoil energy, then there's a much higher probability you're going to have a malfunction. Uh, that's oftentimes where uh, what's known as, uh, as a stovepipe commonly or a failure to eject malfunction that commonly occurs because of a poor grip, meaning not even so much grip. It can be grip, but a poor, you're not, you're not resisting the gun enough, meaning you're not anchoring things in your hand enough or the wrist is allowing things to rotate too easily which is referred to as limp wristing the gun you're going to create malfunctions that way for sure poor grip posturing or something like that right yeah poor grip posture as if they're not mm -hmm. uh, gripping it properly and they don't have enough rigidity behind their wrist that they will induce a malfunction and now i've also heard it said tap rack and bang right have you, have you yeah. heard it called that before? The tap, rack, and bang is, is the, the way that you clear that? Yeah, you know, so the idea, I mean, well, bang is what? Bang is firing the gun again. Um, right. The bang is not part of fixing the malfunction. Uh, there might be a bang. There might not be a bang that follows the actual clearing the malfunction. The thing that clears the malfunction is probably just the rack, actually. You might not even need the tap, but it's probably a good idea to still do the tap in most contexts. And so what clears the malfunction is tap rack. Now the third more, most common type of malfunction I've seen is uh, some kind of failure to eject typically. Um, and that again is usually because the slide is not cycling fully. And that is either um, user induced because they have a, a poor grip on the gun or it can be ammunition related to where the ammunition itself is not powered strongly enough to get that full slide cycle and so well they're probably the three big ones and that is typically solved with a tap rack as well um, of, of addressing the, uh, the the malfunction problem but um, so yeah those are probably the three most common things that i've seen either bad ammunition failure to get ammunition in the gun either because we failed to chamber it in the first place or failed to get the magazine in or something about our grip causes the magazine to come loose. And then the third thing being that failure to eject or stovepipe type malfunction because of poor grip or uh, underpowered ammo. So I think probably in a future episode, we'll introduce you all to a simplified approach to clearing malfunctions like these that we've talked about here today. Um, and, and maybe not necessarily Sim well, simplified in the fact that my goal is to reduce cognitive load on people when they're under stress.
And the diagnosis for something like a failure to extract is going to be very similar to a failure to eject. And they can feel like the same thing. And they can even look like the same thing if you don't know what you're looking for or you don't really pay attention in the moment. And again, as I mentioned, you can take a stuck case situation and, and make it into a double feed if you don't know what you're doing. And so not that that, again, is the end of the world because you probably need to go through the same procedures to solve the problem anyway. But um, so probably in a future episode, we'll talk about and introduce a simplified mental approach to diagnosing and fixing malfunctions. But today we've basically talked about the three main types and uh, kind of the classic way of solving them, either a tap rack or, you know, magazine out, rack, 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 magazine in, reload.